Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring His truth to you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our hearts agree with what you say and your wisdom for today. The will of God is being done on earth in our lives as it is written in heaven right now. So we give you praise and I declare right now every burden is being removed by your word. Every yoke is being destroyed because of the anointing. Thank you for you are visiting everyone listening and watching and there's a change in their lives. There is joy in the city. There is joy in the nation. <laughs> Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. All right, so he says, You are of God. First John chapter 4 and verse 4. Don't forget this part. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Who is them? Every them. <laughs> Everything referred to them. Those who plan against you. Those who plan against you individually or personally. Those who plan against your family. Those who plan against your business. Those who plan against your church. Those who plan against your, your nation. You have overcome them. Have overcome. Not shall overcome, have overcome, praise God. So we have already overcome them. How do you know we have overcome? Because we function by the wisdom of God. And let me tell you something, the wisdom of God already speaks. Before the war began, we have won, praise God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. How? Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, they are of the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. You know, that, that's why I don't get involved in talking about conspiracy theory. And hey, I mean, why are we, beating, why are we, why are we troubling ourselves for their conspiracies? They are being them. So why are we bothered about them being them? See. You know, we need to inform people. You, you can't inform everyone, see. Because I'll tell you something. The Spirit of God is building His church. And He knows who, he's, who belongs to God. The Lord knows those that are His. Sometimes we make too much noise. And then the effect is little. Why? Because we're making noise to the wrong people. Now, what it takes to do the will of God is this. You do the will of God. You do the will of God that has been revealed to you. When you do the will of God, when you stay in your place, then you will give room to others around you to do the will of God. And as we all begin, for one man, as we all begin to believe and do the will of God, it will keep expanding and expanding. And that in itself will reveal those who are not of us. So it's not just about preaching. It's about leaving. We leave it. So now he says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Right? So what we have is greater. There is no question about that. There is no trying to be greater. But we are greater. What the Spirit of God in us is greater. Right? And then he now says, they are of the world. These them that are planning, that's why they plan. See, they are of the world. So they speak as of the world and the world hears them so don't be moved out how come many people are doing this don't be moved by those things the world will hear its own but what they say we are of god he who knows god hears us simple sometimes you preach and oh why, why would you say why, why, oh, you know so, so you know just like this someone come and say we're not supposed to be tight i mean but yes will someone have told them this truth Yes, and they applaud you. And you feel, yes, the message is going around. But listen, who's hearing you? Is it those that are of the world that are applauding you? The fact that they are in church or in your church doesn't mean they are of God. See, it's a we, we are of God. He who knows God, yes. 
he who is not of God does not hear us. Jesus said something. He says, anyone therefore in John chapter 6, anyone therefore who have heard and have learned of the Father will come to me. Did you see that? Anyone who have heard and have learned of the Father, when they hear me speak, they will recognize my voice and they will come to me. So Jesus is saying, it's not me that will try to convince people. No, I'm speaking the truth. The people who already know the Father, who already know God, when they hear me speak, they will come to me. This is how we stay. These are stands as preachers of the gospel. These are stands as those who speak the truth. When we speak, those who are of God will hear us. Yeah. Because we are not the ones that will tell them what God is saying. They, will, they already know in their hearts what God is saying. But when they hear our voice, it becomes like a confirmation. It becomes clearer. So they listen to us. That's how it works. So don't get perturbed when people don't listen to you. If you know from the Spirit of God you are speaking the truth. Speaking the truth not because you read it somewhere, not because somebody taught you. Speaking the truth because you, from the place of your fellowship with the Lord, you got that truth. Understand these things. He says, now look at it. He says, let me read that verse 6 again. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Simple. Now where is the spirit of error or the spirit of truth walking? Not in the preacher, but in the listeners. Yeah, in the listeners. See, now when, 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 when you have the spirit of truth in you, speak, is it, when you have the spirit of truth in you, and then someone is speaking error, you will know. You will not be drawn to such a person. Even though you, know you like this person, but when they speak error, you know that's not the Spirit of God speaking. So you test. That's why he told us from verse 1. You test. And he said, nah, 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 nah. I, I won't take this. I love you, but this one, uh, this is not the Spirit of God speaking. So I'm not going to flow you. You get what I'm saying? Praise God. Verse 7 now. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Everyone who loves is born of God and he knows God. Why? Because when you know God, you will understand that God is love. Praise <laughs> God. I, I, I love this, this chapter 4. I trust the Holy Spirit will help us. In this, the love of God was manifested to us, that God sent his only begotten son. You see, love gave his only begotten. See, so that's when you say God is love. You see the demonstration. He gave us his only begotten son. All right. <clears throat> Into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiator, propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. He gave his best for us. Now, did he lose his best? No, he didn't. See, that's the principle of love. Love is not afraid to give because love knows it has. You didn't get that. Love is not afraid to give because love knows it has. Now, that's why even Jesus, the first commandment, you know, he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. So self-love comes first. Then the same measure you love yourself, you now love others. Now, what do I mean self-love? Self-love also means knowledge. You cannot love who you don't know, see? And that's why many people don't love Jesus because they don't know him. The more you know him, the more you love. You just fall in love with Jesus when you know him. I'm telling you, I've, I've heard of hardened criminals who never feared anybody, who never had time for anybody, but when they met Jesus, oh, hey, what a great change. Suddenly they became so cool and quiet and weak and I'm telling you the truth. To know Jesus is to love him. So the same thing with you. If you don't know who you are, you can't love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, how then can you love your neighbor? You can't. So when you see people selfish, when you see people angry, 
they are showing what they think of themselves. Not you. You are not their problem. They are displaying their thoughts, their thoughts, their innermost thoughts on themselves on you. So when somebody beats you hard, when somebody abuses you anyhow, they are truly telling you what they think of themselves. But when you see someone loving, just loving, you're finding someone who have come to the place of understanding that, look, I have all things. I have all things. So they're willing to sacrifice anything for you. Why? Oh, don't worry. You know, so, oh, take it. This is my last, this is the last money I have, but take it. But, but how would you, oh, don't worry. Why? Because the person knows how to be taken care of. Praise God. Yep. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Verse 12 now. No one has seen God at any time. Did you see that? If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. If we can love one another, his love. So that means we've come to a place of knowledge, of love in ourselves. All right. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent the son as savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him. Whoever confesses, he's not saying whoever will stand before the preacher and say, I confess. No, that's not what he's saying. Whoever confesses, his life shows, his words reflect. He acknowledges that whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God. See, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Did you see that? So God is love. If you abide in God, you will know him. So when you know God, you will know love. And so what, what happens to your life? self words See? You won't wake up and say, I'm tired of life. I'm going to commit suicide. No, 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 no. self words comes when you know that God is love. So you know God and when you know God, you know yourself. That's the truth because you are a reflection of God. Praise God. <laughs> mm. Love, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Love has been perfected among us in this. No, no, this is how we know that love has been perfected in us. And that's what's going to give us boldness on the day of judgment. You know, when judgment is coming, you know, hey, you say God is coming to visit. Wow, praise God. Man, that's good. Now, when God says, I'm coming to judge, he didn't say, I'm coming to destroy. Nah, you see, I don't understand. When God says, I'm coming to judge, he's not saying I'm coming to destroy. He's saying, I am coming to set the record straight. That's what he's saying. I am coming to set the record straight. So when God says, I'm coming to judge, he also is telling you that I'm coming to make your life better. I'm coming to do you good that have not been done to you before. Praise God. Whoa. Mm, 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 mm. so he says we have boldness on the day of judgment why because as he is so are we in this world not not in the world to come in this world thank you holy spirit our time is up we have to stop here now i'll see you tomorrow god bless you Bye-bye.